guys welcome back today we're talking about how to beat the florida heat and still have a magical park day before we get into the video if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you'll be notified every single time i upload a new video and if you enjoy this video be sure to give it a big thumbs up it greatly greatly helps the channel and i really really appreciate it so so much so we traveled to walt disney world in the heat of the summer quite often and the reason for that well there's actually a few reasons normally you can get a good discount in the middle of the summer months and right now they're actually running a 25 percent off i believe if you are a subscriber to their disney plus streaming service so we definitely take advantage of discounts like that and it helps and it saves a ton of money like you'd be surprised um then the next thing is that a lot of the children who are in the south um are already back to school which means that the park crowds are going to be much lower we are in new york city so our kids don't go back to school until the first second week of september so we definitely like to take advantage of like that last <laughs> that last piece of summer for us and go to walt disney world Lastly, aiden's birthday is at the end of august and what kid would not want to celebrate their birthday in the most magical place on the earth so considering all of those options we tend to go in the summer pretty much every single year and it just works really good for us. Since we have gone so many times during the summer months, we definitely learned how to beat the heat and still have the most magical time in Disney. It's very different from when you travel in the fall. It's very different when you travel in the winter time. Summer is very, very different. So I'm going to share my top tips with you guys and I hope it's helpful. And let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions. My tips are not in any particular order. So here we go. Tip number one, you have to drop the park. If you're going in the heat of the summer, you have to be there as the park opens, which means rope drop. So if the park opens at eight o'clock, you wanna make sure that you plan, if you're using Disney transportation, you wanna plan at least an hour for you to get to the park. If you get their park open, you have a very large window of time to get as many top attractions done and you will be surprised how many things you could do from say eight o'clock in the morning to about like 12 30 1 p.m one o'clock is like that sweet spot when it gets really really hot it gets really really humid and then the thunderstorms roll in so i recommend rope dropping the park and getting out by one o'clock heading back to your resort and just relax go to the pool have lunch take a shower change and then head back to the parks maybe sometime after like four or five o'clock depending of course till what time your park is open because there are some parks like animal kingdom that pretty steady they close at um at eight o'clock plan accordingly but i think going back to the parks around four or five o'clock is absolutely the best tip number two hydration you want to be as hydrated as possible so there's kind of two options that you can take if you have a stroller you can bring a soft cooler and you can load up as many drinks as you wish you can bring pretty much anything in a plastic or can kind of container uh, you just cannot bring glass and you cannot have loose eyes the ice either has to be solid or if you do have the loose ice you have to put it into like a ziploc bag and then you're okay and you have to have a soft cooler so if you have a pretty decent soft cooler you can put it underneath the stroller or you can buy the stroller hooks and just hook it up and you can have all of your drinks there so that way you're not refilling your water at the disney parks because i know some people don't like the way the florida water tastes um and you just have your drink of choice it could be soda sparkling water just regular water and you're also not spending like five dollars a bottle in disney because that's just ridiculous now if you don't want to carry a soft cooler or if you don't have space for a soft cooler or you don't have kids and you don't require so much of water just having a refillable water bottle would be great um you can fill up pretty much 
on water at any fountain or you could go to any counter service location and they always will give you a cup of water and you can just throw that cold water into your refillable uh, water bottle and call it a day my other tip that goes hand in hand with staying hydrated in disney parks is getting something like liquid ivy really really great they come in variety of flavors and they're very small so you could just throw a few of them into your park bag and this will keep you very hydrated because there's nothing worse than being dehydrated and overheated in the disney parks it's very very dangerous and it happens all the time because people come and they're not prepared for that florida heat it's very very dangerous number three portable fans yes 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 get a portable fan for every single person in your party even if they're not sure if they want it they need it they don't want to carry it trust me when it's a thousand degrees and it's super humid and the air is not moving at all that circulation is going to be a very much needed and it's going to be very much appreciated so get everyone in your party a portable fan they're not expensive you can find many different ones on amazon there's very small ones they're literally they're they're like this big and they're so thin you could easily put it in your pocket you could easily put it in your bag um, and just take it out when you need it and some of them even have two or three speeds which is great if you have a toddler or an older child who is still utilizing a stroller definitely get one that clips onto the stroller there is ones that clip and then there's one that kind of like wrap around those are very helpful because then your child doesn't need to you know hold the fan it's just right there and the best tip for moms who are pushing strollers get yourself the same clip on fan and clip it on the handle of the stroller but facing your face thank you you're welcome the best mom hack ever <laughs> honestly the best because when you're pushing a stroller possibly having a backpack possibly holding another child's hand or holding something in your hand like a drink or a snack you cannot hold a fan so having a fan that clips perfectly to the stroller top and pointing at you the best for four sunscreen yes you don't want to make the mistake of going to the disney parks and burning the first day because no one's going to be having fun on day number two and three and probably day number four florida sun is very strong and it's very hot and sometimes you think like oh you know i'm not gonna burn or whatever you're gonna burn you're gonna burn everybody burns everybody burns and apply the sunscreen on areas that are very exposed obviously don't forget about your shoulders don't forget about your back your neck your chest your you know the front of your neck your face and also don't forget to get chapstick that has spf because there's nothing worse than super dry chapped lips that are burning no <laughs> and just reapply the sunscreen you can get something small again to put into your parks bag and apply it in the morning before you go to the park and reapply it in a couple of hours and potentially when you come back if the sun is still out uh, reapply it again you don't want to have your shoulders burnt it's just not fun and especially if you have those cute backpacks on the lounge fly the disney backpacks or any backpack and you're carrying things and when your shoulders and back is burnt it's not going to be fun so definitely put that sunscreen on tip number five book a sit down dining reservation you want to get out of the heat you want to get out of that sun and you want to actually have a reservation where you could actually sit down and enjoy your meal away from the sun in a very cool place <laughs> that is it's going to save you parks have a lot of quick service restaurants but you're never guaranteed a spot or a spot that maybe has more fans more shade more 
air conditioning so you want to book that sit down rush these reservations 60 days out that is the window right now but it is very much possible to get the same day reservation it's also possible to get the week of because people are canceling because if you don't cancel your reservation and you don't show up then they're going to charge you i want to say it's either five or ten dollars per person so if you have a large party it adds up so a lot of people cancel some of the great options for instance in magic kingdom would be be our guest crystal palace liberty tree tavern um the plaza those are all great sit down restaurants and you really could just sit down take your time i know sometimes it may feel like they want to get you in and out but no one's going to physically like tell you like you got to go so if you book a reservation and you just enjoy your meal nice and slow you eat i mean you could spend like an hour and a half to two hours and that is going to recharge you you will definitely be very happy Animal kingdom some of the great options are so truly contain it is a quick service but it's so large and they have so much indoor space you see in there it's the best so you don't need a reservation for that um but it's a very good place to just go have delicious lunch and just get out of the sun. Um, the other place would be Tusker House, which is great, but it's hard to get that reservation because they do have characters. If you're in Hollywood Studios, Sci-Fi is great. Hollywood and Vine is great. When you're in Epcot, it's a little bit different. Like they have um, Garden Grill with characters, which is amazing. I feel like in Epcot, it's a little bit easier to hide from the sun because you have so many pavilions especially when you're in a world showcase that you can go inside every pavilion and just like hide from the sun for a little bit a couple of trips ago literally i was overheating overheating so we went in morocco who has like this little nook in there uh you go inside and there is like a car desert simulator I think that's what it's called. I don't know. Don't come for me. My kids enjoy that for a little bit. It's like a big screen and you're kind of like sitting in a car, but not really. I don't, I don't even remember, but there's benches there. There's areas to sit and the AC so strong. We literally probably sat there for like good 45 minutes, like recharged, re, re everything. <laughs> so definitely utilize the pavilions in, um, in Epcot. And my last tip, tip number six, is rain gear. Because there's nothing worse than being hot when it's like 100 degrees and 110 degrees humidity and then you get caught in like a monsoon. Yes, there, there's nothing worse than that. So my suggestions and recommendations for good rain gear is skip the ponchos. Just Let's just skip the ponchos because when it's that hot, you're going to be like in a sauna when you put on that poncho because now you're wet you're sweating we're all sweating everybody's sweating and you're putting on that cheap poncho that you got in the dollar store or you picked up a pack of 10 from walmart i know so many people recommend those ponchos because they say get that and then don't buy the 20 dollar poncho in the disney park yes maybe but those cheap ponchos are the worst they're honestly the worst you're gonna feel like underneath that it, it's three times hotter so i definitely don't suggest that plus they're very cheap they're very thin they rip no good the ponchos that disney parks sell yes they're a little bit pricey but they're much more durable they're much more thicker and they're super cute so if you could splurge I would say just get the ponchos at the Disney parks. So you could even pick them up like the day you arrive so you already have them in case it's going to rain. What would be is to invest into a rain jacket. Rain jackets keep you much cooler, they keep you dry, they're more durable, and they're just overall a better option. My kids have two rain jackets from Columbia. They're the ones that have the hood with the mickey ears they're super cute and i love got them like a size bigger and i actually leave them in disney in my owner's locker i can put that video somewhere over here you guys can check it out really great i got them on a great sale because they do run a little bit expensive but that is a great option the other thing if you're going to bring an umbrella been there done it numerous times watch those videos with the cute disney umbrellas no ma'am 
those umbrellas do not work in Florida. They're going to break before you even open them because they're not strong. They're just not for that kind of rain. They're not for that kind of wind. They're not for that kind of powerful downpour. No. If you're going to bring an umbrella, you have to buy and invest like into a heavy duty umbrella. That's it. Like do not buy the cheap one because you're going to buy a cheap umbrella for five people. You're going to spend, you know, 25 bucks for all of those umbrellas and they're going to break and that's it. So if you're going to break an umbrella, bring a very strong one. <laughs> Honestly, been there, done it. We threw out multiple umbrellas instantly. And so the tip for your rain gear is shoes. You have to be smart with what shoes you wear when you're going to Disney in the middle of the summer, in the middle of the rain season, you have to be smart. So you either have to pack extra shoes and socks with you, depending, you know, if you're bringing sneakers or, you know, some kind of like light sneakers, or you're bringing something like Crocs. I know a lot of people don't like Crocs. I like Crocs, especially for my kids, because there's nothing worse than bringing your child to the Disney park in sneakers. It's going to rain. They're going to get a million blisters. They're going to be in the wet socks in the wet sneakers, and there's nothing you can do. And then they're going to want to go home. I mean, back to the resort for myself. I usually will bring two pairs of sandals. Also be mindful when it starts pouring really, really hard. You will most likely destroy your sandals like if you have sandals from target which i love and i buy all the time but they're not made so good they're not waterproof they're not water resistant they're not made for that kind of wetness everything's gonna come apart so be ready to have another pair of shoes you know handy with you if you need it unless you're going back to the resort and you're going to change so definitely be mindful flip-flops is hmm it's it's cheap and it's easy to carry but it's dangerous because you could slip they're very slippery so definitely be mindful of what kind of shoes you bring because you want to stay safe on your feet you want to stay dry and you want to stay comfortable because there's nothing worse than hot wet nasty socks shoes and my i guess mini tip or tip number seven i think i said tip number six was going to be my last tip but this is like a teeny tiny tip if you want to stay fresh in the parks i would definitely recommend to bring a deodorant bring your body glide i would definitely recommend to bring maybe some kind of light um perfume or body spray i would definitely recommend maybe bringing body wipes or facial wipes that you can go into the bathroom and just you know like refresh definitely helps a ton well i hope this video was helpful for you if you have any tips that you would like to share with me and everyone in our disney community be sure to leave them down in the comments below i would love to read through everything because there's there's just so much to learn on how to maneuver disney parks you know in the summer and the winter in the rain in the heat in the snow i don't think they get snow but you know what i mean anyways i hope you enjoyed this video be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you found it helpful and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you real soon bye